Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer. So no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's all totally free with no catch. I highly recommend you give it a try. Download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. Hello, I'm Rebecca Larson, and welcome to a new installment of 5-Minute History. The Tudor's Dynasty Podcast. Tis the season to discuss traditions. And while it appears that this day is not celebrated globally, and not in the UK, it does have an interesting backstory nonetheless. Today we learn about St. Nick Day, or the Feast of St. Nicholas. Now who exactly was St. Nicholas? Well, St. Nick or St. Nicholas is a figure from history who is most commonly referred to as Santa Claus. Now, it could be argued that he is one of the best known figures around the globe. If you know about Christmas, you know about St. Nick. But what is his story and how did he become such a popular figure? Nicholas was born in 3rd century Patara, part of the Roman Empire, now at present-day Turkey. He was raised in a devout Christian family, and upon the death of his parents, he inherited a vast sum of money. Now, likely due to his pious upbringing, Nicholas wished to use his wealth for good. At about the age of 47, Nicholas became a bishop of Mira, and he quickly gained a reputation for his unwavering compassion and generosity. His life was marked by numerous acts of kindness, embodying the Christian principles of charity and loving one's neighbors. One of the most famous stories about St. Nicholas is the tale of the three impoverished sisters. Their father faced financial ruin and couldn't afford dowries for his daughters, jeopardizing their future. In a secret act of charity, Nicholas threw bags of gold coins through their window, providing the necessary dowries and saving the family from destitution. This act of generosity, along with many others, earned Nicholas the admiration of his community. Over time, stories of his kindness spread far and wide, and he became known as the patron saint of children, sailors, and the poor. St. Nicholas's feast day, December 6th, became a day of celebration and reflection of his life because it marks the day that he died. People commemorate his legacy by emulating his acts of charity and selflessness. Now this day evolved into a time for communities to come together, sharing in the joy of giving and helping those in need. So why do we celebrate St. Nicholas Day? Beyond the festive traditions, it's an opportunity to reflect on the virtues of kindness, generosity, and compassion, values that St. Nicholas embodied throughout his life. When I considered doing this episode, it made me reminisce about my own childhood and how we celebrated St. Nick Day on December 6th. My heritage is primarily German. I grew up listening to my dad, my grandparents, and aunts and uncles speaking the language around me. I was always so fascinated by this culture that I didn't understand. St. Nick Day was one that I didn't see as a tradition when I was a child, but now as an adult, I see the beauty in it. So I put a call out to my listeners and followers on social media to find out what they received on St. Nicholas Day. In my house on the farm, we did not wake up to any gifts, but instead a candy tray full of chocolate-covered peanuts or peanut clusters. And so with that in mind, I share with you the things that some of you experienced on this day and that you shared with me. One follower, Marlene, mentioned that as a child, she placed a plate under her bed and when she woke, there would be a gift on it. Nadia mentioned that she left a boot outside her room, and it got filled with sweets and nuts. Julia mentioned that she continues this tradition with her children today, and has them put out a wooden clog, a nod to their Dutch heritage, and then the clog was filled with small gifts and candy. And Jessica mentioned that her grandmother would have them put out their best shoes, clean them up, and leave them near the fireplace. They'd find small gifts and chocolate the next morning, if they were good. 
Traditionally speaking, children leave their shoes or stockings outside of their bedroom door or above the fireplace. Sometimes they would even leave carrots or hay for St. Nick's horses to feed on, much like the cookies and milk and reindeer food that we might leave today. Now, we can't talk about the nice St. Nick without also discussing the naughty Krampus. Krampus is traditionally seen as a half-goat and half-demon monster. Who is Krampus? Well, Krampus is a figure from European folklore, particularly Alpine traditions, associated with Christmas. Krampus is often described as a horned, anthropomorphic creature who is part of Christmas traditions in various countries including Austria, Germany, Hungary, Slovenia, and the Czech Republic. While Santa Claus, or St. Nick, is known for rewarding good children with their gifts, Krampus is believed to punish naughty children during the Christmas season. Traditionally, Krampus is depicted as a demonic creature with a sinister appearance, including horns, cloven hoofs, and a long pointed tongue. He is said to carry chains and sometimes a bundle of birch branches, which he uses to swat and punish misbehaving children. In some traditions, Krampus is also known to carry a sack or a basket to carry away particularly naughty children. The legend of Krampus has evolved over time, and in some regions, there are even parades and festivals dedicated to his character. These events often involve people dressing up as Krampus and engaging in lively, sometimes humorous, celebrations. As we celebrate the Feast of St. Nicholas on December 6th, let's remember the spirit of St. Nicholas by extending a helping hand to those in need. In doing so, we honor the legacy of a man whose actions, centuries ago, continue to inspire us today. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Tudor's Dynasty Podcast. You can follow and support the Tudor's Dynasty Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon at Tudor's Dynasty.